Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here on Southern Illinois campus and I'm exploring uh, the engineering quad and I came across this pretty cool steel structure that they have put together to represent different connections and different steel members that you would use in construction. And so I'm going to go through and just identify uh, the things that I know that I'm seeing here and we'll talk through just like some of the, the names and purposes and types of connections that's going on. So. Without further ado, let's start here with this wide flange beam. And you can see the, uh, the actual uh, top member here, the flanges, uh, top flange, bottom flange, web. And this web is connected with a weld. And you can uh, specify the weld as the radius of the weld. So that looks like maybe a quarter inch uh, to maybe a 3 eighths weld. And then we have a bolted connection and that weld is done on a plate. So it's welded to a plate that is then bolted to the web of this. And this would be the girder to this beam. So the girder is essentially a member. It's typically larger than the beams tying into it. And that girder then is responsible for carrying all the beams tying into it. And that girder then fastens typically to a column. So basically the only difference between a beam and a girder is a girder carries a beam. Uh, it's responsible for it and in this case this girder has a hole cut through it and that hole could be for the passage of uh, electrical plumbing HVAC um, whatever you need to pass through uh, that beam and yeah it's gonna definitely limit its structural capacity but it's you know calculated for and there's certain spots that you're not allowed to go through and then there's other spots that you are so it'll tell you you know you can't be a certain distance from the edge uh, you can't be a certain distance from the uh, the actual flanges. Now here on the flanges you can see that uh, it's kind of being reinforced because there's a big cut through here and that would most likely be for like a big duct passing through this beam. Typically they're passed under but if you really had to go through the beam you could. Um, this is a really large hole for this. I've never seen one in uh, real applications put in like that but it looks like they're suggesting reinforcement uh, in the web to stiffen it up with a couple plates so plate would basically just be like a flat member of steel. Here we have uh, another wide flange beam going in. This one's uncoped. Um, this one here has a double cope. So a cope is when you remove material uh, on the top and bottom flange and you just let the web tie into that other web. Um, you can see why you'd have to cope that. And oftentimes that's done so these surfaces can line up nice and flush if you were to have like a steel decking going atop, across the top, that's typically where you see a top cope. Bottom cope here is if you need to size this up, maybe for bending strength, it has to be a certain depth. And uh, the shear strength near the end where it ties in doesn't have to be as much as maybe the bending strength you're making up for. So it has to be a deeper beam. And then therefore, you know, the bottom might have to be coped to allow it to sit in there. Um, so here it's not flush on top. It's a smaller beam. So it's just tied in and here it's only tied in with a welded and bolt connection with two bolts on one side. And since it's a short member, it's also welded and then the same bolt through bolt going through on the other side. And here we see plates being used as gussets to tie these two, uh, join these two pieces of steel together to create the uh, structural effect of it being one longer piece of steel. And then we have some tube steel being used here. And here you can see that that tube steel has been kind of notched away to allow uh, this beam with a plate under it, uh, welded underneath it, um, being tied to it, and that's bolted. And here we have another uh, web of uh, basically plate steel being used to receive this tube steel, and this tube steel is welded to a plate that's sitting right on the back side of it. Uh, this column here is sitting on top of a, a typical connection with bolts embedded. You can kind of see that. And those typically have a bolt underneath that raises that, that bottom plate. And notice how thick that bottom plate is. It's really quite beefy because it has to transfer a lot of weight. And that's on there so you can level off. So if the concrete pour is not perfect, those bottom bolts are used to then level on the threads where that plate needs to sit. And then it's snugged down tight by the bolts on top. And uh, oftentimes I've even seen grout packed in there uh, to help stop water from, from sitting inside there and just kind of shed it and kind of mound that, that grout off to the side. 
And let's see what we got here. Here we have a C channel uh, tying in. And that's done with the welded plate on one side and bolt passing through. So here only one plate, uh, one angle iron uh, sitting on there. Uh, you call that like an L shape or an angle shape. Now on this one, you can see that this steel here is cut on, a, on an angle to make an angled connection. And it's just fastened inside the web. So that's one way to deal with an angle. You can even get uh, another type of angle. Here we have an angle where the actual um, member here, the, the angle iron is on the angle that is desired. And that's bolted through, sorry about the sun, bolted through on one side and then welded on the other. And here, same kind of process done to receive it on the other side. And this is a great way to frame out uh, a building that you want to have an angle or a curved appearance. You can actually frame out your curve with a series of short angled segments. And then when you wrap that with the secondary uh, structural material, such as uh, framing for like a curtain wall, you can uh, divide that up into even smaller segments and then give really off the appearance of it being uh, a curved uh, structure, when in reality the primary structure is, uh, is actually just like a series of short angles. And let's see, what else? Um, these right here, these um, stud anchors are welded on here, and this is a common practice for attaching like a corrugated, so just picture cardboard, how it's like kind of wavy in the middle. A corrugated steel deck would sit on top of this with holes cut through for these stud anchors. Those would pass through the deck, and then when the concrete deck is poured on top of that, typically between three and five inches of concrete would be sitting on top, and these stud anchors then make a solid connection between the concrete and the steel beam. So then it can act as a composite member. So as this beam wants to bend, the top is in compression, and then the bottom uh, of the steel is in tension, which is a perfect marriage between the two materials. Uh, here's another example of a dub doubly uh, coped beam, and this one has just one piece of uh, plate material that's welded into the web of the one and carriage bolted into the other. And you can see uh, all these different combinations of bolts being used, and that's all based on structural calculations. And here's even a connection between, which there's a hornet's nest in, between two pieces of tube steel. And so you can see how that's lapped there. Actually, no, that's, that's not two pieces of tube steel. It's one piece of tube steel, and it's in a seated connection. And it looks like that's only cut out to reveal the, how this tube steel is sitting into a seated connection here on an angle iron. It's then into another piece of tube steel. So in reality, what you would be doing here is you'd have your... Let's call this our, our girder. You have plate steel on top of that that's welded to this tube steel. And then that tube steel has the same connection on the top to the next beam. And if this member wanted to sit into it, you'd weld your plate and then this would slide right in. And I would assume, they're not really showing any kind of connection there, but I would assume that would be bolted, uh, probably through bolted through to keep that from sliding back off. Um, just in case there's any movement. Then here we have a bar joist truss uh, that has basically made up of a cord of two angles and a bottom cord of two angles. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, cord, and then the web is out of a, uh, a bar, and that would be bent to form your typical triangular web inside of a truss, and that's sitting on top and also on an angled plate. And then on the very top, we have a uh, another example of a bar joist, it's on top of a column, and here we have like a bar like braced or angled connection, and that's with welded plates and uh, a bolt. Here we have an example of how you can use an angle iron to then attach a piece of C-channel. And then we have a larger truss system here shown, and it's simply made up of a combination of uh, T, uh, WT shapes, so like wide angle steel, so it's kind of like the same uh, cord to web, and then it's, uh, I'm sorry, not cord to web, um, flange to web, but it's kind of just cut, it's a segment of it to almost, to form like the letter T, here it's upside down, and then here we have pieces of angle iron, and all this is welded together to then form the truss, 
and that truss here is dying into the column, but it could also be sitting on top of a column or a girder or a wall. And uh, that's done here, represented with welded and bolted connections on angle iron. So really kind of a cool piece of art that serves a great educational purpose. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to save and subscribe. Just passing along as much knowledge as I can that I know uh, for then you to absorb as well. Really kind of cool. So if you're into this kind of stuff, uh, subscribe to the videos because I'm just fascinated by construction methods and architecture and all things like that. All right, talk to you guys later.